From the station you count on for local news that matters, this is your forecast first from KARK4. Before you head off to bed, we want you to be aware of the threat of severe weather moving across the state into tomorrow morning. Be on the lookout for strong winds, heavy rains, perhaps some lightning. Thanks for joining us at 10, everyone. I'm Bob Clawson. And I'm Ashley Ketz. Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan is tracking the storms. He joins us now with a closer look at when we can expect them here in central Arkansas. Keith? Well, Bob and Ashley, a lot of lightning is right. These storms are producing prolific lightning across portions of Oklahoma into extreme southwest Missouri. Let's get a little bit closer look now and show you what's going on a little bit closer to the earth. I mean, a little bit more zoomed in version along Interstate 44. This is just three minutes worth of lightning rolling through the past hour. An amazing amount of lightning with these storms as they're going off to the southeast at about 25 miles per hour. Other showers and thunderstorms running along I-44 from Springfield off to the northeast toward the Rolla area. Now these are going to continue their southeast track as we head through the rest of the overnight hours. They are going to remain on the strong side. Remember that severe thunderstorm watch in effect for far northwest parts of Arkansas through midnight tonight. It is possible and in fact likely that that watch will be expanded further off to the east where there will be a slight risk of severe thunderstorms or a 15% chance across the rest of northwest Arkansas into north central Arkansas. The green colored areas across the central and southwest part of the state, including Little Rock, it's a 5% risk. So the overall thinking is those thunderstorms are going to be weakening as they move through northwest Arkansas into the central part of the state a little bit later on tonight. Again, that severe thunderstorm watch until midnight for far northwest Arkansas. Large hail damaging winds a possibility. Radar forecast would show those areas of thunderstorms again kind of splitting apart over the overnight hours about three o'clock in the morning getting close to the Little Rock metro area through northeast Arkansas extending back along Interstate 40 west to the Oklahoma state line thunderstorms for your drive in tomorrow morning especially Little Rock and points off to the east according to this computer guidance model and for the mid part of the morning tomorrow those thunderstorms finally shifting southward towards southern Arkansas be before beginning to wind down just a little bit by tomorrow afternoon we'll look for the best chance of rain here in central Arkansas, roughly from about 2 o'clock in the morning through about 9 o'clock in the morning, and then just isolated showers or maybe a thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon when the front itself comes through. We're going to start the day around 71, headed for highs in the mid-80s. The rest of your forecast for tomorrow and the Labor Day weekend in just a few minutes. And because we are your weather authority, it is our mission to alert you and your loved ones in the event of severe weather. Be sure to follow us online and on air and our social media accounts for the latest weather updates. The lights are on at War Memorial Stadium tonight as season openers for high school football kicking off. But for one Little Rock team, there's a lot on the line. And this year is the last chance the McClellan Lions will ever get to bring home a state championship since their school's closing. KRK4's Susan O'Quarry joins us live from the stadium. And Susan, the change has been a long time coming. Yeah, Bob and Ashley, this is something that's been in the works for a while, but tonight McClellan Lions were just excited to get out on the field and they stepped off a little earlier with a win. Now the players and coaches tell me they have their eyes on coming back here and ending their season winning the state championship. <laughs> the gear is game ready. And so are the players inside McClellan High School's locker room. It's time to shine. As the football team suits up for the first time this season. Everything's great about being a lion. Junior quarterback Jordan Harris knows it's the last year wearing this jersey. You gotta be a humble beast. Their school is one of several being combined to make Little Rock's new Southwest High. I'll see, boy. I'll see. Meaning the days of these pep talks are numbered. We used to go lines and now go grips. You got a four X. Excitement loading the buses turns to a noticeable quiet on the road to War Memorial. It's a little bit bittersweet moment. Kickoff keeps Coach Maurice Moody on the sidelines. Now in his team's hands to vie for another state championship. We want to start our season here, we want to end it here, so that's the sweet part of it. In seven years building this program, he doesn't measure success by just touchdowns. Change lives, and that's the most important thing. Getting an education that'll last forever, and the relationships that they build with the coaches and the other players, you just can't downplay that. Win or lose, there's one final score that matters. The history of McClellan will forever be here. The Lion legacy. We just family. That can't be fumbled.
There are still a lot of questions about what will happen next year. We know the new Southwest Little Rock High will combine students from McClellan, J.A. Fair, as well as some from Hall. That'll mean a blended team and coaching staff still up in the air. They'll have to apply for those positions. That's why McClellan Lions tell me they're just focusing on this season and doing their best. Live in Little Rock, Susan Corey, back to you. All right, Susan, thanks very much. Little Rock School District investigating a brawl that happened in the Central High School lunchroom today. School officials confirming eight students were sent home after the punches were thrown. We're told this could have all stemmed over a boy. Grandparents say that they're concerned that this kind of behavior is happening a little too early in the school year. Fear, yeah. fright, uh, afraid for the students involved and those standing around. July leaders say the school does not condone or tolerate this kind of behavior. Administrators say students who videotape the fight and are sharing it through social media may also be disciplined over this. Tensions running very high tonight as members of the state school board of education host a forum about the future of the Little Rock School District. State board officials say the format of tonight's meeting would be a tabletop discussion, unlike the format of the first meeting. The topic discussed what could happen if the district did meet the next criteria. Some took part in the discussion, others protested. No decision was made tonight, but there's gonna be another meeting tomorrow night from 6.30 until 8, this one at St. Mark Baptist Church. Make note the format will be the same. A judge in Oklahoma finding Johnson & Johnson liable in a lawsuit claiming the drug maker helped cause the opioid epidemic. The company ordered the, the, them to pay the state of Oklahoma more than $7,572 million. Now the state suing the drug manufacturer for more than $17 billion. The Oklahoma Attorney General's lawsuit alleged Johnson & Johnson created a public nuisance by spreading misinformation to doctors and the public using deceptive and aggressive marketing on the potent painkillers and ultimately leading to overdoses. Arkansas Attorney General Leslie Rutledge issuing a statement following the Oklahoma District Court's decision that reads in part, it will hold all manufacturers accountable for the generation of addiction they've created and bring back the resources for treatment for citizens of our great state. To read the full statement, you can go to our website, krk.com. We've got it all there for you. Working for you, our North Little Rock police officers being forced into making traffic stops. We first told you last week that officers were apparently told to delete all emails, which violates the Freedom of Information Act. Now, krk 4s Rebecca Jeffrey investigates other concerns regarding a possible traffic quota. Rebecca? Yeah, good evening, Bob and Ashley. Staff notes from last year and as recently as June of this year, ask officers to average a certain number of traffic stops each day, depending on the shift. While Police Chief Mike Davis adamantly denies that there is a quota, a now retired officer says he was told he'd be punished if he didn't hit those numbers. When you see those blue lights behind you, sometimes you know why, sometimes you don't. It's a big part of the job, but there's a lot more to it than that. Traffic stops can often be a source of frustration for the driver, but a retired North Little Rock police officer says it's a source of frustration for them too. In 2018, staff notes show there were new guidelines asking for day and night shift officers to make four stops on average and midnight shift to make three stops. You better average your four stops a day or you can face some kind of punishment. He says he was threatened to have his shift and days off changed and lose his take home vehicle, which one staff note says had already happened to another officer. Arkansas Code 126303 states no state or local agency may use the number of arrests or citations issued by a law enforcement officer as the sole criterion for promotion, demotion, or dismissal or the earning of any benefit provided by the agency. You're saying it's all about stops, but I'm being punished, so no, it's not about stops. You're wanting, you're wanting tickets and arrests, generate revenue. Fast forward to June of 2019, new staff notes show Assistant Chief Ralston wants to see more non-moving citations and another look at traffic stops because they're on the decline. And documents provided by the department show officers average about one and a half stops a day over the last two months. But this retired officer is hearing change is coming again. We're back on it. Get, get your stops. And hopes this trend stops without the need for blue lights. North Little Rock Police Chief Mike Davis said in a statement to me that the 2018 meeting was a misunderstanding. He said in part, we have no quota, never have and never will. We do have expectations and I believe that was what the meeting was about. We wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't. We'll have the rest of that statement up on our website. Actually, it's up there right now at krk.com. Bob. 
All right, Rebecca, thanks very much.